I'm about to chat with a young man, his name is Carlton King. Not sure if we're related, but boy, has this guy got some stories to relate. Welcome to Marbella now, Carlton, and welcome to Marbella. Thank you very much. You know what I love about that, what you first said? The young bit. Ah, That's fantastic. Well, we're all young at heart. <laughs> well, some exactly. of us are young at heart, and I do exactly get that right. vibe from you that you're yeah. very much in the moment. In the moment, very right. true. Well, the reason that Carlton, I've allowed him to keep his sunglasses on is because he is one of those secret service type of guys. So he's keeping a low profile and I made him take him off so I have a quick look and take a look myself at his face and we're cool. He's a nice guy. Yeah. So no, because a lot of times if you don't get to see people's eyes, Absolutely. you, you don't, don't really know. But in this instance, that's actually part of the uh, reason that Carlton's Rage Glass is MI6, that you were a DJ. I mean, how, how does that happen? Where do you... You want me to relate that? Yeah, that I mean, happen? just how, I mean, it's what goes in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. If I take you back very quickly, I'm born in the 50s in the, in, in the United Kingdom and uh, my father was a professional sportsman and at one stage I was actually um, given a contract to play football, okay? Now I thought to myself, actually it could be a short term life, so I didn't do it and I went on to study a little bit further at school and then I thought, what do I do now, okay? I was always into the music, I used to do a lot of Kung Fu and music and stuff like that, so I started doing DJ. I ended up DJing in Germany. Uh, um, as well and that's how I fell into this side of the business a very funny story which uh, my disco burnt down where I was playing I got a job the next night but a guy I always knew he said do you want to be a detective a German guy I spoke the German language well in fact I spoke like a German at that stage and so therefore I said yeah why not but so someone just comes up to you in a bar and says hey mate do you want to be a detective I've known him for ages so what it was was this guy used to keep saying to me come on you'd be a detective you'd be great nobody would think that you're a detective it's a house detective as they call it in Germany like nobody you think you're a detective because you're a black guy and, and there's not many German black guys speaking German. Great, please. So I said no. Why would I? I was earning good money as a DJ. But actually what happened is as it brought, burnt down I thought hey this life can be a problem. So I went doing that but I still played disco later on because I got hired the very next day. So that's how this whole thing started how we turned around. You can read it in my book by the way called Black Ops Incredible True Story of a British Secret Agent. So that's how it happened. So I started as a house detective, then I went working for the American forces, I was a detective for the Department of Defense, and my boss was an FBI agent, and he said if he were an Englishman, he'd be in Scotland Yard Special Branch. So I, I'm an Englishman, so I applied for Scotland Yard for the Special Branch, I got in, I did Special Branch work, and then I went to MI6, which is the Majesty's Secret Intelligence Service, did that work, and then latterly I went into SO1, which is Specialist Protection. So I've done a myriad of different things, which is actually unique. Nobody's ever done that before in the United Kingdom. And that's why I wanted to bring those talents and those skills to a program I'm doing with Jeff. You know Jeff and Warrior? I I, of one. course, I mean, we're all here. Well, first, thanks to John Smith of the Euro Weekly News, because he said to me, Nicole, you're going to want to meet this guy, Jeff Clark. Suddenly, messages started coming, Jeff, about films and series, and so this one finds, and that one, and now with this reality show, which I'm sure we've met um, Phil Campion, who is SAS, Commando, Correct. Parachuter, uh, in your face. Correct. But now we've got you, the behind the scenes Correct. can be equally as in your face, but your speciality is doing this, just passing by, no one really seeing you while you're Absolutely. watching. When I need something to happen, okay, my job, as an officer, be it in Special Branch or be it in, in MI6, was actually to get agents, what we call agents, people who tell about their country, i.e. they do tell us what their country's secrets are, or in my case, terrorism. Okay, so you're a terrorist in a terrorist organisation. I look at you, I try and turn you, I make you my person. Okay, now, that's a very dangerous thing to do because if he gets captured, he's dead. And maybe his family's dead. Maybe everybody around him is dead. So why does he want to do it? So I've got to find out why he wants to do it. I have to find out that he's not trying to trap me. Because when I meet him somewhere in the world, I don't want somebody waiting for me to put me in a yellow jumpsuit and next minute my head's chopped off on TV. So those are those issues. But if I have a problem with some of these aspects, I call Big Phil. 
that's how the connection comes. You see what I mean? Or if I need some protection, maybe sometimes, I call Big Phil. Yeah? So that's how we're working together. So mine's a strategic overview, Phil's is a tactical action. So the team is everything in your line of work? Correct. Life. We're completely different people, completely different organisations, but I know I can call on people like Phil or various other ass assets that the United Kingdom has, or in fact that the West has, because I can call on American assets or on Spanish assets to do the job. Did you find that your colour was a hindrance at any time? Absolutely. Of you being promoted and getting Ab to where you are? Absolutely. It's, it's, um, let's be truthful about it. it is, uh, when I was born, I used to see signs as a kid, no dogs, no Irish, no blacks. Yeah, I mean, it's, a different, it's not right. so different, unfortunately, as it should be. That's how I used to see those signs. But it is uh, it's still reality. very, very, uh, very so, poignant. So the reason why I came out, actually, is to say to other people, the times have changed somewhat now, you can do something with your life. Even though, as in my case it was, it was very harsh in front of your face, now it's not in front of your face and you can do something. I don't want to hear excuses from people. That's hence the reality show. It's about saying to people, wherever you're from, whoever you are, if you put effort in, you can make something happen. Too many kids today are out on the street stabbing people because they say we've nowhere to go. We can't do anything. We're being held back. I want to give them the opposite. I want to say, listen, you can if you put the effort. The lure of easy money allows people to get away from doing the hard things. That's what the show's about. Well, I think the nice thing with the show is the hands-on, the interaction, because I think a lot in our society today, if you've got two parents that are working, the ease with which we can put them in front of a, um, a video game or just get rid of them because we're all too busy is basically come back to do what you guys are doing. This hands on, I, talking, interaction, saying yes you can as opposed to you'll never make it that way. <laughs> no. This is why I wanted Phil. Because what I want right in the beginning of the show is for Phil to come in and strip him down. Oh now, bless, this is a terrifying. Phil, you, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> oh You're going to be stripped down with Phil stripping you down. Then we're going to build you up and then we're going to go into my world which is all about cerebral. It's all about thinking how you do things. How do we make this happen? How do I make this person work for me? How would you do this, that, or the other? How would you plan operations? Planning is immense. You have to learn and understand, dot every I, cross every T. That's what we can do. And if you can do that, you can work anywhere. So yes, I'm not going to create somebody who's going to be in the services, but what I'm going to create is are individuals who can go and work in any company around the world because they've got skills that only the very few have. You know, this world, the secret world, is actually very, very small. You know, when I started off, the enemies were the Eastern Bloc, the KGB, things like that. Now, I've seen KGB officers, or um, MFS officers, which you know, Stasi officers, okay, who, you know, in the old days you saw them, and now it's different. It's actually it's quite an interesting story in my book where I met one fella who had arrested me as a spy, okay? He didn't get me, because he... But then later on, when I met him in London just before the wall fell, he said, I knew you were a spy, you know, I couldn't get it. So it was brilliant. So that's the way that world works. It's a very small world, and the people you met, you see them all over the place. Yeah. And obviously a lot of our work is undercover work, so it's very, very subtle. Now, if you can teach that in people and have them think about everything they do, when they then come into the workplace, they're an asset. That's what I'm trying to Ability get. to adapt to any situation. Any situation. But keep high your head. or low. You're always keeping your under head. Under pressure. Under total pressure. Always pressure. High or low, work it. Without anybody knowing that you're struggling. What would you give to our viewers? One tip to be aware. One, one bit of advice to start them on the way to be a better person, to make the most of themselves. I would say, know your strengths, but know your weaknesses more. That's the biggest secret. Know what your weaknesses are. Those are the things that are going to throw you away. So work on them. Know your strengths and utilise them, but you must know your weaknesses. And in my game, don't get caught. That's the one thing. <laughs> I, I'm with you on that one. Carlton May, you never get caught, but so glad we caught you on camera. Thank you very much. Now nice to meet you. honoured, absolutely honoured. The honour's mine. Thank you very much. Carlton. A lot of people prefer to take their own car when going out at night. However, when it comes to time to go home, that might not be the safest or wisest option. 
for some, just one glass of wine could put you over the legal limit, which means if you drive, you could put in yourself or others at risk. If you find yourself in this dilemma and think possibly you should not be driving, you can just give Linear Director a call. They will order and pay for a taxi, which will take you and your fellow companions who were with you in the car home with up to a 25 kilometer radius, as long as you all fit in that one taxi and you're all going to the same place. You can even ask for them to pick up your car and take that back too. And this is seven days a week from midnight to 7 a.m. and up to four times a month and this is obviously all in addition to the fabulous insurance that you get with Linear Director. Hey, hey. A big welcome back to Marisa Moreno. Not only is she the Danish consul but she's also an excellent lawyer and we're very grateful Marisa to have you on the program again Thank you. and to catch us up with all the novelties that are going on because is it just Spain that the laws change so often, so quickly? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, how you, you can tell you me. must spend your whole life studying. Yeah, part of uh, part of it for sure. Yeah. So you've just come back from a, a short holiday. Short holiday. But yeah. it's nice because you like to go locally, different areas that's in it. Spain. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And uh, in this uh, occasion, we have uh, chosen to go to Extremadura and Galicia, and uh, it was very nice. Really nice. Well, really welcome nice. back. Thank you. Refreshed, as I say, all that studying that goes on being a lawyer. Where do you find all the time to fit everything in? I mean, when do you do, like, spend all night reading up things? Or? Well, you have to organise. You have to organise part of the job. So, you know, that uh, uh, the same that any other people, but the waiter has to clean the, the, you know, the tables, you have to study. That's it. It's part of the job. Today yeah. we're going to be talking about inheritance and the rights of a common law partner. Yeah. Is it very different than any other countries? Why is what, what's the uh, main well, things to be aware of in this respect? Well, the problem with this kind of couples is that usually they are not married because they want to be on a part of the legal consequence of the legal duties. But, but uh, sometimes when something happens, they need or they want to have the, the advantage to, of the rights of the law, that they're giving the law to the, to the married couples. So in case of uh, the inheritance, it uh, depends on the uh, um, Comunidad Autónoma, the region in Spain. Uh, in, in, in Andalusia, that is the, the region that we, uh, all of us il, uh, are living, is, uh, there is not any right uh, for, the, for, for the couple that the part of the couple that he survives. That means that if you want that uh, your couple, your common law couple, going to have any right when you die, um, it's, uh, you need, it's necessary, it's need, it's need to, to grant a will. And to grant a will, that to appoint her or him as your heirs. Obviously, according with the limits that uh, we have here, because if you are a resident, you can choose your personal uh, law, but you can as adapt the, or you can accept the uh, Spanish law. So if you, are, you have uh, children, uh, two-thirds of your inheritance has to be for the children, so that means that you only have a third to give to your... And that is uh, something that's obligatory under Spanish law. Yeah. So even if you are an English person for, or Dutch or French, but if you have a property in Spain, yeah. if you have children, the children have a right to two-thirds yeah. of that property. Yeah, two-thirds of that, that property. Even if you have no children and you have parents, your parent has a has right, but, but depend of the situation, it's better to grant a will. Because in the will, just avoiding the limit that the, 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 the law says, you can at least to appoint your, your couple with any kind of right, but you have to keep in, ta in mind that the re reduction of the inheritance tax in Andalusia only apply for the married couple. That means that the uh, common law couple are going to have the right to reduce the taxes. Either. So it's something that every couple has to be advised uh, for their lawyers or the consultant just to to make their um, their better for the other for the other part of the couple. So what yeah. could be interesting on one side to not get married, 
and to just be a common law couple. On the other hand, it could be beneficial because otherwise you'd be paying far more taxes. Yes. So it's really, um, yeah, it's what it depends on the individual depend. circumstances That's it. of the person. It depends on the circumstances of each person has to, but has to be advised and has to be think very, uh, you know, very with a cold mind, just uh, what you want and what you expect and what you can do. Because it's, uh, it's very often we see in the office the people that uh, when some a part, a part of the couple uh, has died, they, you know, they find that they are nothing. I say, well, yeah, but you didn't precede this situation. And in life, you need to precede the situation if you want to have the advantage of the law. Yes. And as you say, mentioning about the inheritance tax is also something that changes very quickly and the moment mm. it's very favourable. Yeah. Found the Luther, and it hasn't been for many, many years. Yeah. So this is really very exciting, but obviously everything is relative to your personal situation. Yeah. So again, as I always say, don't do anything without a lawyer. Marisa not only is a very recognised and respectable lawyer, but she is the Danish consul, and that is an extra guarantee that you're getting the most up-to-date information that you need to get the best out of a system that really is very much here to help the people. Yeah, that's it. That's, it. that's the idea. That's the idea. Sometimes it's like a tailor-made dress, you know. Exactly. That, that, uh, Make that it the bits that fit the best <laughs> and the best for us. Marisa, thank you so much for joining us. No, totally and welcome. if you want more information, just contact Marisa's office at justlaw.es. Thank you. Just law because it's just law and also because it's just like in like justice. Yes, yes. That's double good double play on words. <laughs> <That's it. laughs>